Hi, good day everyone. Um, today we are going to discuss about week 2 of our uh, course module uh, entitled Air Conditioning System Part 1. Now, we have two parts for this course. We have Part 1 and Part 2. Since it is a quite long section of our uh, module, uh, I'm planning to separate them both into two lectures. So first will be week 1 and second will be week 2. Alright, so let's, uh, without further ado, let's go to our week 2 um, air conditioning system part 1. Hello guys, so you are looking again at our times page for our module air conditioning and refrigeration engineering. I need you guys to go down straight ahead to our lecture section, lecture notes section, um, which is entitled HVAC Week 2 Air Conditioning System PT1 or Part 1 and as you can see here we have we have something hidden from you guys HVAC, HVAC Week 2 Air Conditioning System Part 1 Q&A Now in this section is whereby you must submit to me as your attendance Okay, we will discuss this later on as we go through the Week 2 lecture of our lecture series of this semester entitled air conditioning system part one all right so if you click on that it will go to our uh, to your uh, pdf while here myself i am going to use my powerpoint all right uh, welcome to our second lecture so you will see there uh, in my uh, glorious powerpoint animation there it says lecture two air conditioning system part one so the next slide is uh, you are familiar with this because you have seen it in the previous week of week one which is my name where you can find me uh, at c9 or block c level nine uh, there's my telephone extension 5263 and my email that you can reach if you have any issues or doubts in our lecture uh, and you can also times message me if necessary uh, if necessary yes now i would like to bring you guys to two of these slides the first one is lecture two week one air conditioning system part one where you have hvac and our introduction you are going to, to learn about types of air conditioning systems system selection and arrangement how are we going to select system and how are we going to arrange it and what type of arrangement is needed for what type of hvac system which is required and before we end this part one you are going to see hvac components and distribution system right on part two next week we will uh, discuss on the hvac uh, our system types continuous uh, continue uh, continuing from the previous uh, week two so this is week three yeah? this is not uh, week two uh, uh, I'm going to introduce you about decentralized cooling, about heat pump system, and also heat recovery systems. Right, the objective of today's lecture is or are that you will learn why do we design HVAC system, what are the types of HVAC system that is available or they are available on the market, in the market, how to select and arrange HVAC system, and what are the component designs that is involved in the uh, system that you have chosen all right um the equator that we are living in right this is us there in malaysia is hot and it's also humid and throughout this equator line is where air conditioning in terms of cooling down spaces is very very popular in cold countries like this section whether north america russia Maybe the Alaska, maybe the, uh, the northern northern uh, region and the southern southern region of our Earth, uh, air conditioning and refrigeration is not used to cool down, but to maintain temperature at desired temperature. For example, uh, refrigerators are used in Alaska not to cool down your food, but to maintain the temperature so it won't be frozen. All right, as you have learned in thermodynamics. Um, but uh, air conditioning can also be used as heat pumps, which we will cover this next week. All right. On the next slide, tells you some of the 
energy uh, usage or energy um, demand for air conditioning system for commercial buildings uh, the survey has uh, said that around 39 gigawatt of our uh, gigawatt of uh, energy and power is used to cool down commercial buildings throughout the equators so, or uh, maybe throughout the whole earth uh, residential building use lesser at 20 let's say 25 gigawatt and 40 to 50 percent of energy consumption is expected to increase in the year 2020 as the global warming increase uh, and projected throughout these years until 2030 right uh, in terms of uh, energy usage you can see that we use a lot of energy to cool down or to maintain uh, temperature in our spaces therefore sometimes there are some countries in uh, have in uh, have included solar power as a main energy dependent for these air conditioning systems uh, as the form of renewable energy and also to improve efficiency in terms of renewable energy uh, uh, in the term of uh, um, tons of uh, equivalent oil around 116 million tons of oil equivalent by 2020 which is by this year and plus we have a uh, COVID-19 which is uh, happening at this uh, hour we might reduce the energy of our aircon on commercial buildings but the energy demand for residential buildings for air conditioning system will increase eventually there are around 221 percent which is double the emissions by 2020 and also 26 top 30 greenhouse gas emitters by the world uh, in the world by 2020 are from air conditioning system right let's go first uh, straight ahead to hvac and our introduction the reason why we design hashback system is we want clean future not only we want to reduce uh, the temperature uh, uh, of a space so that we can live comfortably we also want it to be efficient what is the point of become an engineer if we don't uh, define efficiency in all of our creation and machineries right so the objective of air conditioning basically are these the first one before starting uh, to design the system we must have critically know what is our system um, uh, is going to do or in another word is what are this system is to achieve are there for uh, human are there for non-human maybe for uh, for uh, farming uh, indoor farming or maybe for commercial buildings or maybe for uh, sports and recreation such as gym centers uh, maybe cafeterias so on and so forth and maybe in the hospital right and the second objective is of course to provide a comfortable environment for human occupants since we design this mainly for ourselves okay uh, not only we define comfortable as to have a very standard or uh, constant cool temperature we must also take good care of our health in terms of air circulatory uh, cir circulatory uh, you cannot have the same air that move in and out of the space while you are living in it uh, for the next eight hours straight you will get sick because you are going to breathe more carbon dioxide and of course more germs as it circulates through the air conditioning systems all right um sometimes other possible objective that we can achieve is for farm animals maybe you are building this in a very hot climate or in a very cold climate or you just want to maintain the temperature for general farms also regulating hospital operating rooms or maybe icus or hdus or um high dependence unit and intensive care units also to maintain cold temperatures for frozen food storage or refrigerators and to maintain temperature and humidity to preserve maybe in museums or in any place that we want to preserve uh, art 
these are some of the objectives that you can achieve by using HVAC and R systems. All right. Uh, in other words, it is very important that you know the objective criteria for a system to be successfully used and you must have a clear identification at the start of the project when you are at the drawing uh, section uh, or drafting. Right? You cannot build aircon systems throughout or for the building after it is completely done, which is very impossible. This is because uh some requirements and some um systems that you need have different design considerations and cost calculation have different kind of components sometimes you can use solar power sometimes you can use a uh, high efficiency motors so on and so forth so in a nutshell uh multiple zones or single zones in any form of zones that you are going to design your HVAC systems, the steps in designing are such one, two, three, and four. The first one to define the zone itself. Is it a single zone, your own room, or is it a multiple zone, the whole floor of your building, so on and so forth. Number two, you must calculate heating and cooling load and air requirement for that space prior building the space. Right? We will cover this on the next lectures. Number three. You must select and arrange the system components. Are the air conditioning system to be above the uh, above the ceiling, or is it under the ceiling? Yes, there are some uh, HVAC system is uh, under the ceiling. Sometimes it's under the floor that you are standing on. Are they going to be a centralized unit, or are they going to be a individual units or split units? And lastly. You must consider the consider uh, what type of fuel that you're going to use. Technically, we are going to use electricity, and this electricity maybe comes from oil or hydroelectrics, or whatever kind of electricity or power that your country has, right? For selection number uh, for item number three, uh, you must size properly. Uh, it must be accessible for easy maintenance. You cannot really build them inside the wall, and in the next five years, when it times. When the time comes to maintain it, you have to break down the wall, which is very costly. And it must not be complex, right? Must not be complex. So the big concept in designing is, we must consider the specific design situations and the type of performance requirements that you want. Right. The next slides give you some of the examples other than cooling down your own room, your house, or the floors of your building, the library, so on and so forth. Another example that you can use air conditioning, HVAC and R system, is for farm animals. Uh, the design uh, issues are economics, health and well-being for both animals and maybe workers that are going to work inside these farms, plus any regulations that is uh, imposed by the government of the chosen country or the chosen place that you are going to build this farm uh, farms yeah whereby farm animal spaces must also be ventilated uh, depending on the climate cooling and or or heating may be provided and it must be controlled by a simple thermostat it must not be complex what do i mean by complex some thermostat you can just go for example if you go to our lecture rooms, if you still remember our lecture rooms and also the tutorial rooms, you can see that there's on the, uh, a panel on the wall, maybe near the in, uh, uh, door, that can let you set what is the temperature needed for the room, what kind of uh, fan speed uh, that you need to cool the room. Sometimes you can set it auto, sometimes it is fixed. Auto means the room, have, the thermos that have sensors. So the sensors can detect if the room is too hot, it will increase the fan speed or it will introduce humidity or will suck up humidity from the room and maybe replace and reduce temperature as needed. But for farms, it must be simple. Switch on and switch off. Uh, the ventilation may be varied uh, because of firstly, maintain the indoor air quality, removal of body and extreme fumes. That means a nicer word is the gases that your animals is going to release. 
either methane gas or farts or maybe a decay decaying animals and maybe the carbon dioxide that they breathe out to maintain inside design temperature that means bring cool air in and bring exhaust hot air out or maybe removing or introducing moisture by uh, humidifier and dehumidifier and the last one is to change the air movement inside the room higher speed uh, provides more cooling compared to lower speed maybe higher speed throughout the uh, daytime as the sun rises and sun shines on the uh, farm that makes it hot and a sm uh, slower air movement when your animal farms are indoors at night the next slide brings you to hospital operating room or operating theaters where it is very critical that these environments need to have dedicated air conditioning system okay uh, in my olden days when I was young when I was doing still my uh, master's degree I will uh, my project is that I went to an operating theater and I studied the air movement inside the room and the air indoor quality uh, that need to be maintained for both staffs like doctors and nurses uh, and for also for the um, patients that is on bed on the bed right the design objective include heating to avoid patients to become too cold or cooling to prevent the members of the operating teams from become too hot usually the room is around 18 degrees celsius or 65 degrees fahrenheit to 26 degrees celsius or 80 degrees fahrenheit the room is technically cold even though that there's not much movement the doctors and nurses are on a high alert and usually the adrenaline are shooting off the roof right and it makes them to sweat even though the room is cold another objective is humidifying to allow low humidity or to increase uh, the humidity and the possibility of static electric sparks um, the humidify that means humidifying will uh, reduce the static electricity spark as you can as you know if the room is too dry the uh, static electricity can increase and sometimes there are flammable gases inside the operating theater that can might be combust uh, so we must use humidifier to reduce water and to, to reduce electricity sparks sometimes you need to dehumidify the room after humidifying that means to minimize any possibilities of mold that may leave on ceilings and the walls and maybe the cabinets and maybe the fabrics inside the operating room operating theater cleaning we must maintain the incoming air to be higher efficiency filters that clean the air remove any airborne organisms and dust that might infect patient or induce uh, allergies ventilation or uh, we must remove airborne contaminants and keep the operating theater fresh so technically we must provide steady movement from ceiling towards the floor and the air movement around the room like my point is showing there so that the room can be in a very clean state next slide frozen food storage or aka the freezer uh, so maybe it's negative degrees celsius or 12 degrees fahrenheit uh, for ice creams and for meats and other kind of uh, dairy products around 15 degrees celsius to 5 degrees fahrenheit this meat is maybe you want to use it straight ahead you buy it from the uh, shop and you bring it home and then you want to cook it all right the design challenge is to have the temperature accurately maintained around these you see the laser pointers that i'm showing now right the temperatures are uh, must be even it must be accurate cooling and good air movements remove moisture because we want to dry these meats or ice cream because these refrigerators have food moisture and heat love uh, microbiotics or microbiology organism that means molds and bacteria and maybe viruses love um, temperate Temp uh, climate temp uh, temperatures we must uh, 
uh, assume that these are not air conditioning system that means we must keep it cold and frozen that's all we don't care about the air in uh, quality how much co is produced on and so forth yeah heating ventilating humidificating dehumidificating are not controlled we want it to be constantly cool and lastly to preserve wood and fibers works of art the objective is we are going to use this in museums or similar places uh, we want the environment to have uh, less mold by keeping the humidity low we must minimize drying out by keeping the humidity up now what is this it's confusing low high up and down uh, it depends if you want to increase humidity you introduce humidity but if you want to reduce humidity you introduce dehumidification it depends right it depends on the applications at the point of time at your museum La uh, next is to minimize expansion and construction of a spring that can occur as moisture content changes especially on, on wood the higher the moisture content wood tends to expand and as uh, as the sun shines and the room become hot uh, the wood might become contract after so long this wood can become weak and maybe broken so you need to maintain steady humidity reasonable steady temperature and to minimize required ventilation system must run continuously humidity control is primary issue and temporary control is secondary because a lot of food is inside your museum you must maintain it with low low humidity next is types of air conditioning system there are a few types of air conditioning system the first one is window air conditioning system number two split air conditioning system number three centralized air conditioning system number four package air conditioning system we will go one by one and firstly we go with window air conditioning system you have might seen this in very old motels or buildings <coughs> like in the uh, 60s and 70s where the air conditioner is stuck under a window the window might be very big but they cut it half or quarterly and you can plug this aircon and, and the evaporator inside the evaporator inside the condenser is outside right window air conditioner although uh, one is most used as the cheapest type of air conditioners um, <clears throat> you need a, a small space just a slot on the wall uh, and then it must uh, these are uh, units are reliable simple to simple to install and simple to maintain as there's one spot that you can just open the back open the front and just you uh, uh, maintain uh, that spot only All right um, the best part of this is this uh, window air conditioning system can become a heater when it is in a uh, cold season or winter and in summer it can be you can use it as air conditioning system a schematic diagram looks something like this this one sorry this one is inside or indoors and this one is the outdoors the expansion valve the fan are just in this small space of the unit itself next split air conditioning system this one is popular you can see this in a lot of our meeting rooms in c9 or in your own room if you have air conditioning system in your own room there right i have mine as well it's, as you can see on the video that i have one the back uh, of uh, the wall that i'm in my house here split air conditioning system uh, have their name by having two parts one is indoor another one is outdoor and these components are the thermostat and cables that link the indoor and outdoor units the indoor or outdoor units is fitted outside the room houses the compressor condenser and expansion valve while the indoor unit have the evaporator and cooling coil and also the cooling fan that blows the cool air and breeze from the indoor split unit all right 
this method you don't have to make a slot in the wall that means you don't have to punch a wall to install this all you need to do is just to mount it on the wall have a copper cable just drill a small hole there and let the copper cable and insulation go through the wall and outside the wall okay um, furthermore present day split units have aesthetic looks it has beautiful looks white design long and maybe flat and because they want to add beauty to the room sometimes it has ionizer uh, inverter to re uh, increase efficiency so on and so forth a schematic diagram can be show a scene on the next page all right there as you can see that this house is beside a paddy field i think so all right next uh, next page is a centralized air conditioning system where you this is very popular it is installed in uh Taylor's university in our uh, lecture rooms and tutorial rooms uh, <clears throat> the central air conditioning plants or systems are used when large buildings hotel theaters airports shopping malls etc uh, are to be air conditioned completely throughout the whole floor you will have the same uh, uh, temperature right uh, the window and split air conditioner are used for single room or small office spaces but the centralized air conditioning system will need or will be used in huge places such as if the whole building is to be cool it is not economical to use split that means you must use one centralized unit okay the schematic diagram can be shown as the picture there of a house that use a centralized unit so you can see here that the most of the components are inside the attic where the hot air will go out and cool air will go indoors next a package air conditioning system now this is interesting since a split unit cannot be used for economical purpose for huge building while centralized unit is not very economical if you have a small unit small space maybe if you live in the big bungalows then centralized unit might be very interesting right uh, but if you have a sort of small spaces and big spaces you can have a package air condition conditioning system where uh, sort of a split section here and centralized section over there the requirement will be five tons for split air conditioning system of small spaces 20 tons for big spaces that will use centralized air conditioning so a package means you can combine split and centralized in one package okay the package air conditioning air conditioners are used for cooling capacities between the two extremes of small space and big space right uh, so the capacities can run from 3 5 7 10 and 15 tons or even 20 tons uh, usually they are common in spaces like universities restaurants telephone exchange just big homes and small holes hollows a schematic diamond can be seen from this space or you can see more online okay the third uh, uh, part syllabus in this lecture is system selection and arrangement all right in other words we call it as zones a zone right some zone have one room some zones have more rooms how do you define zones if you can see if you can see pardon me that your room has one thermostat for example you go to any lecture theater in our school you have one thermostat that means that is one zone if you go to any tutorial classes you can see that on the walls have a lot of thermostat sometimes you have one if you have one uh, centralized aircon in and out sometimes you have two if you have a longer tutorial classes one at the front one at the back one thermostat equals to one zone right what is a thermostat? Something look like this. A control device that senses space temperature, sends a correcting signal if, signal if the temperature is not within some desired range. 
sometimes your thermostat can be uh, can have sensors sometimes it's manual you just punch the numbers and the system will be uh, as what you have selected sometimes it can run on auto as such this system runs on auto also clock the and any schedule that you want it to be you can you can have it cool or dry what is the inside temperature and what is the cool setting okay another word is humidity start that means the control humidity of the space sometimes your humidity uh, thermostat have humidity start as well and usually humidity start is auto controlled by the whole system the next page tells you about separated zones what is separated zones you can see that these are dotted red lines okay one box will tell you one zone this one will tell you one zone another zone and another zone that means for each of these uh, floor plan rooms have its own uh, different spaces aka zones it can be also a part of large space or a small space for example sorry okay a theater stage may be one zone where audience sitting areas in the second zone that means the one that have stage where the, where you present or play bands one zone for the audience is another zone so that means two zones a multiple zones of a same big space okay just like your uh, tutorial classroom some of it has two zones right uh, the front and at the back sometimes you only have one zone the next example is surgical operating rooms where you can provide uh, adequate dilution of air in the control space or maybe stringent requirement for each room maybe this one is operating room this one is just medicine room so on and so forth the so cleanliness humidity temperature control and air distribution is the most important right each has different requirement heating and cooling therefore it needs zoning okay next is multiple zone large office buildings factories large departmental stores multiple zones and multiple installation tall buildings each central system may serve one or more floors college in the uh, university military bases supermarkets research facilities central station bus station so on and so forth will have multiple zones that means two rooms will share one zone and the next two rooms the next three rooms will have its own zones okay however total capacity of the equipment of all buildings will not be probably used all the time that means sometimes the first two rooms are going to be used in the morning and sometimes these two rooms will be used at night depends on the requirement another requirement that you would like to see which i'm not stating here as you can see now focus here that our places here have west and east east means that this section of the floor will face the sunrise this section of the floor will face the sun down right so when sun is rising as you can see outside or outdoors the sky technically have some cool uh, colors blue hues green hues and yellow hues from the sun as the sun sets on the west in the west right the sun and the sky tends to become warm color warm color and if you notice if your room is facing the sunrise compared to a room that is facing the sunset room that's face the sunset or zone that's face the sunset always have a higher temperature because heat that is transferred using infrared from the sun is higher during sunset that is why when you want to purchase a room or house or a building try not to build or to have that space that the window or the wall is facing the sunset if you can have that luxury then it's very good okay so the room that is facing the sundown needs a higher capacity tons or whatever you want to call it high energy to cool this section down compared to the morning 
okay another thing is uh the energy use tariff uh at the daytime uh compared to the night time or the evening is different okay maybe if you are having a room facing the east you might not need a uh, high capacity or you might not need to use a uh, high electricity or have a higher electricity bill if your house is facing the east okay save energy okay next uh, slide is the component okay uh, you can read there i'm not going to go through everything c is for controller where c c is here chill water return chill water supply uh, which are these chill water supply chill water heater we have direct acting so maybe i'm going to introduce how does this work okay so outside air we go in <coughs> and these are dampers that means if these dampers are angled like that you will allow partial amount of air move through the uh, tubes if you have this to open right open that means a horizontal line that means you are allowing a full capacity of air coming from outside if you close them all lines become vertical that means you are not going to use outside air and the air that going to move through the room will become circulated without having air to be refreshed okay <coughs> now these are the HEPA filter that means <coughs> you need to uh, uh, filter the air that moves through the uh, through the air duct this is a heating coil that means there's an electric, electric coil there that means to heat up the air if the air outside is cold you want to heat uh, heat up a room then this heating coil will be switched on either by the controller or manually okay control here like an Arduino board or any microcontroller uh, this one is cooling coil that means if you switch on cold refrigerants maybe r32 r134a or maybe water itself can be used as a refrigerant to cool down the air that moves through here and this is a fan that means this fan is to supply air into the room and maybe this is where your room is you have a few thermostat t stands for thermostat here and there to study what is the supply air temperature is it cold and what is the zone thermostat compare them if zone thermostat temperature is higher then we will in uh, we will um, switch on the cooling coil switch off the heating coil and the room will be cool if the temperature zone uh, inside the zone is cooler than the one supply air cooling coil will be switch off heating coil will be switch on and the room will become hot so remember this okay you can write this in your answer for your attendance submission now the written air will either come from the room that means either go to exhaust to outdoor or they will have a damper here to make the air return back into the room and if you need to have a fresh air then this damper will be open so on and so forth okay the explanation for that is here all right it's here you can read it i've explained it just now so therefore i'm going to skip to the next uh, slide this is a reheat system a reheat system means a for multiple zone the first one just now is for a single zone this one is for multiple zone as you can see we have one zone here these dotted lines is for one zone maybe a room then to the other zone maybe you have another box another box another box and all this will have the same written air you can close this damper open this damper fully close this one based on the NPS what is NPS motor positioning system which will read the signal coming from the controller which will read the signal coming from the room and from the supply air ducts if you have more rooms that means you need more controller and more load analyzer so these controllers will talk to one another and to study which zone need cooler air which zone needs um, uh, hotter air so on and so forth okay so if you want to have a fresh air that means open this uh, uh, open this uh, uh, what you call this now damper and close this damper so on and so on depend on the conditions okay this will be the whatever i explain this on uh, but i would like to have 
uh, one term to be explained here which is the economizer economizer is these right okay i'm gonna mark it these are economizer right why equal the economizer the mps will read what is the reading coming from the room you will open and close the damper dm for damper mo damper motor and see that if you need uh, fresh air if you do need fresh air so on and so forth remember if you have fresh air coming into the room you need to cool it down or heat it up based on the uh, requirement if you close the outdoor air for example and you let air move through the room you can have an economical point of uh, operation that means you just circulate air and the cool air from the other zone come and cool the other zone itself using the same air once a while we open the outdoor air and the exhaust air to freshen up the room if not you will have a lot of co2 built in okay so these are the uh, steps in designing the uh, zones and requirement of the room okay last one components the first one is fan you have the heating coil and the cooling coil and also humidifier and dehumidifier fan can have a street fan you can have a centrifugal fan usually a centrifugal fan if you have an l boot ducting section and the next page is for pumps and pipes to bring in water to bring in uh, chill water or hot water or steam and pipes that bring in the chill water or fuel or refrigerant so on and so forth okay and these are the other components the evaporator the condenser indoors and outdoors and these are the controllers or the thermostat okay now unfortunately we cannot see this I bring some of your seniors to see the AHU or air handling unit at end, at the end of each floor usually we have this air handling unit to control uh, the uh, the MPS remember the the dampers so this is where the controllers are placed the ductings the chill water and hot water uh, um, to the zones of the floor it is a separate room sometimes in the basement sometimes on the roof sometimes in the service area at the end of the buildings or floor fan and air handlers for moving air pumps heat exchangers for transferring heat energy uh, flow or control devices chillers furnace and bowling and other equipment therefore we conclude the objective of today's or this week tutorial uh, uh, class where you learn all this right now for submission you need to do this first um, what I need you guys to do is take a look at the next slide uh, you can use this dotted line for the zones uh, but the question is consider the small single-story office building in the figure below lay out an air rental system using air handling with two zones now here we have one zone right so you must design your two zones uh, based on the requirement of um, there is a space between the ceiling and the roof for air ducts the air handler is equipped with a direct expansion cooling and hot water heating coil which means if i can close this uh, keep if I'm going to scroll back to here, it will use this one, yeah? This multiple zone. Use this method to study uh, the question, right? Let's go back to here. Okay. Show all associated equipment schematically. Describe how the system might be controlled. What I need you guys to do is to just define the zone which one is facing west west which one is facing east the equipment room where are the places where people stay 
Where are the places where the equipment stays? Which one need a higher cooling capacity or lower cooling capacity based on the positioning of the rooms? So you must have two zones. You must use the multiple zones uh, and then you must draw, for example, you must draw first these dotted lines, right? So let me write down first. Draw zones two zones up to you number two draw schematic as much as best as you can like the multiple zones slide okay this will be your attendance right good luck okay thank you if you have any questions you can come uh, sorry you cannot come you can ask me uh, on times and send me an email if you like right okay guys so i believe that concludes our week two uh, uh, lecture air conditioning systems part one so I'm um, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in uh, our next videos. Uh, will be maybe in tutorials or maybe in uh, lecture videos. Again, okay? if you have questions, do ask me on times message or email me if you like. I'll try my best to answer as soon as possible since our class is already online. Uh, if you have any questions regarding tests, um, don't worry about it yet because we are coming back. Uh, I think I believe I think our face to face class will resume on 1st of June that means week 5 so I hope the RMO will be lifted and we can see each other at school till then bye bye